Welcome back to Travel Outdoors and another overnight trip with the hot tent and the dog. It's late winter, 1st of April. Figured I would come out this Friday, spent the night in the woods, still a bit of snow on the ground during the day, maybe plus two, plus three degrees. In the morning hours, just before sunrise, should dip down to minus 10 degrees Celsius. So it still gets a bit cold during the night, but we don't have the stove tonight for warmth, but I just want to do some cooking. And this is a good platform for that. And as you just saw in the intro, I'm trying out a bit different thing tonight. So I have the hot tent and the tarp and a chair and really trying to extend the camp. And I'm thinking that if I would have bigger tarp, maybe five meters by three meters, I could actually extend the whole shelter with an A-frame tarp that way. That would be pretty cool and it would have plenty of space for maybe a five guys or whatnot and of course the stove and all of our gear. So that's a bit of a concept that I'm running through my head at the moment while watching how this tarp setup came together. But thanks for joining in. Let's settle in and uh, start making some dinner. So what I have here is some pork and onion that has been marinating now in the fridge for about 27, 28 hours. So should be good to go. <laughs> Just about fits. All right. While that is building up heat, let's check out our fridge. Ah, huh, look at that. Friday beer for Friday evening. No beer for Rocka. Hey. It's actually not that bad keeping those doors open. I can still feel the warmth coming from the stove, but I don't have to take clothes off. I can walk in and out as needed. Cheers. Mm. I'm sort of tired of all the IPAs, but they do work every now and then. A hoppy and multi unfiltered India pale ale. Ooh, how unique. <laughs> Let's put some seasoning. Oh yeah. I don't have a fork because who uses a fork outdoors? But I have my spoon and my dignity. <laughs> Just check my temperature meter and it showed that it is around minus one at the moment. So slowly but surely cooling down as the sun is setting. I figured I will come outside while there is still some daylight left. Mm -hmm. Not bad at all. While I wait this to cool down just a bit, I figured we could talk a bit about channel, do a little channel update since, since the last one. Um, I believe last time I said that I was in the progress of making a website and I was in the progress of making a website. In fact, I almost finished it, but then life has been uh, busy. Days have been filled with being and playing with the little one. So the website is kind of on ice at the moment, but the idea still lives, so don't worry about it. We are also very rapidly approaching that magical number 10,000 subscribers which is nice because I haven't really been pushing my viewers to subscribe it's just a number and youtubers know that it isn't actually that important anymore it used to be really important but not anymore and that's because how the algorithm works and things like that but it's still kind of a morale booster if nothing else bit of a 
personal victory to reach that 10,000 and I figured that's when we are going to do our first live stream together. But instead of the standard 10,000 subscribers Q&A live stream da -ba -da -ba -da, I figured we could talk about knives. I haven't really done a video about my knives in a long time so I figured I'd give an update of my knives and tools and things like that in general and uh, if you have any questions about those or any gear uh, we'll do it live from my gear room Barusto so I can show everything during the stream and talk about stuff and after that I figured we will continue making live streams regularly not related to any subscriber numbers or anything like that but just about different topics I would like to have a bit of an interaction with you all and talk about gear and talk about hiking and talk about dogs or whatever <laughs> but let me know how it sounds like would you be interested in participating in live streams there's just a bit of a challenge in regarding the timing of those live streams because roughly 40 to 50 percent of my audience still comes from Finland which is still much appreciated but the second biggest country in terms of viewership is United States and that's quite a big of a time difference to United States and then rest of the Europe follows in terms of those numbers I have quite a bit of folks from UK and uh, Germany and of course Sweden and, and so forth following so it's always nice when you guys leave comments and, and tell me where you're from uh, it's exciting to know that my humble channel and my simple videos can reach people around the world but anyway I will figure it out it's going to be either early in the morning for you guys in the States or then late in the evening mm. and a final note before I turn that camera off and focus on eating yes Rokka has had his dinner already don't let the whining fool you he has been well fed as he is always but Alaska Malamutes they are never satisfied <laughs> we are back inside to Rokka here as well and shut the other half of the door hang my carbon monoxide alarm and it just showed that it was roughly 4 degrees still daylight left a bit sun has already set behind those trees I got to say I kind of enjoy having this chair inside the shelter in fact one of the reasons why I started looking at this kind of TP or pyramids type shelters already maybe three four years ago hey rock <laughs> was that I never really liked the traditional dome shaped tents because they are so well usually they are quite small there's not really room enough even to sit up properly and you would only use that space to sleep in so you carry all that weight all that bulk set it up and then crawl inside and sleep inside that shelter that's why i started uh, really using only a tarp all year around all those years ago because with tarp you have plenty of space you can depending on the configuration you can even stand up underneath so that's why tarp was and still is my number one shelter but I started looking at these type of shelters because I figured it would be nice to have something a bit more protective especially when I'm with the dog originally the idea was to have a bit more protection from the box but that of course didn't realize with this shelter unfortunately as we've discussed many times yeah it is nice that you can even without a chair like this sit up and, and move about in this shelter and with this chair it's uh it's even nicer and i'm thinking that especially during summer since or well not necessarily summer but warmer months when i'm not carrying the stove with me so i have a lot more space inside so i think that i will be carrying this chair instead on on quite a few trips nice bit of luxury and of course you you don't have to keep this inside the shelter as well if you have a nice spot you can put it outside and enjoy the outdoors and enjoy the evening or the day like that 
so it does offer a bit of luxury benefit. While I have my youth or at least my strength to carry all this gear, I will do it and, and, and carry things like camping chairs. <laughs> well, just as I moved away the chair and laid down onto my sleep system, so my sleeping bag and my sleeping bag and my bivy bag, figured I will lay down, what's the fire and so forth. I heard a loud pop. So it turns out that I just punctured my sleeping pad. And it's not a small puncture by any means. There was still one stick like frozen solid sticking up from the ground, which I had missed. And actually I have this PV back here. Uh, or one of the reasons why I have it is to protect this inflatable pad. Well, the stick went through the PV back and now I have a big tear over here. Luckily, I do have the repair kit. Never done this. Previous air pad lasted for five years, almost five years before internal failure. And now this is now going for its second year and this happened. But let's see, I'll do my best. Well, I'm doing everything by the instructions, but this is not a puncture, like a clean circular puncture, but a big cut. And the thing is that I usually always carry my repair kit with me. And in it, I would have these adhesive patches that I could have used to repair this very quickly and effectively. And for some reason, I don't have it this time. This one time when I would have needed it, I don't have it. And I don't know, that, that is just too much of a coincidence, I guess. <sighs> But I'm not giving up yet. I will still put a couple of more layers of glue on there. But let's be realistic here. It's big cut and the patch that comes with the repair kit. Uh, its only function is to provide a bit more protection. It doesn't provide uh, the airtight seal. That is created only by this glue. And the cut is just too big and too wide. I think for the glue to hold. So this type of field repair with that only uh, might be impossible. But I will keep trying. It's uh, 15 minutes until nine o'clock in the evening. So I'll give it until nine, put one more or two more layers of glue, see if it holds. If not, then plan B we will bail out doing a bit of night navigation then I guess well I'll be damned it actually worked I cannot hear any air escaping so I guess it's now down to the final test of me actually laying on top of this thing and Seeing if it will hold or not. I think I'll give still one coat of glue around the patch and let it dry and try the whole laying down and watching the stove thing again. <sighs> Time to crawl into the sleeping bag and call it a day. Good night. Good morning, folks. Fired up the stove as planned. Got a kettle on, making some coffee and porridge as always. Condensation is melting fast only what minus 
one degrees up here anymore. Outside it's minus 11. So I guess it was a good plan to leave some firewood for the morning so we can warm up the tent and get rid of at least some of this moisture. As for the night, well, good thing was that it was very warm. Sleeping bag did its job. The bad thing is that the air mattress, well, it actually held up almost throughout the night, but around six o'clock is now 6.30. Rocca came on top of me and after that it started to deflate so I guess there was too much pressure on the sleeping pad because I started smelling glue as well so I guess there wasn't a new puncture but the old one uh, started leaking a bit so it slowly deflated but anyway waking up around six is uh, pretty normal so I can definitely see this setup being quite nice, especially during maybe fall when it's probably raining more often. Having a piece of cover outside of the tent kind of opens up the camp a bit. Seems like Rokka slept well. He's digging a hole again through the snow. This works. As you might have noticed when I got here, I had this IKEA bag full of firewood sandwiched between the F1 mainframe and the little big top rucksack. And that's exactly the way that this system has been designed. It is meant actually for hunters, so they can carry meat between these two components. But I wanted to test it out and it did work just fine. So now I as I don't have any firewood left, I just zip this little big top back to the mainframe. And it was great to be using this mainframe again, because I haven't really had that much use for this. For two reasons. First, the little big top by itself is an extremely capable backpack. And it turned out that I don't really need extra carrying capacity for most of the things that I do. And secondly, this mainframe, F1 mainframe, just doesn't fit my back very well. I don't know what is the deal with that, because the rucksack itself has almost identical harness system and it fits really, really well, but this one doesn't. So I've been toying with the idea of just selling this. <laughs> I waited for so long. Was it like a year or something how long I waited for this? mainframe to arrive but in the end just haven't really had the use and doesn't really fit me so it is what it is but anyway now today hiking back home or back to the car this whole setup will be a lot lighter to carry yesterday i had maybe 24 25 kilos on my back with the firewood today a lot less than that less water no firewood no food so easy carry the ridge line of my tarp actually goes through this green loop that is on top of the Mini Peak XL, and that is just to keep it so it doesn't by accident somehow slip down to the chimney. And then it just goes to the tree over there. Very simple setup, but it does work. And now imagine if I had like a 3x5 meter tarp, I could have this edge all the way to the ground. And if this end would be a bit lower, I could actually close the end as well. So it would be completely closed shelter. And if I would have these doors open, I could actually then heat the whole thing with that one stall. That would be kind of cool. Really almost tripling the space that that one tent gives me. All I need is a big tarp. The thing is that I don't really have any <laughs> other uses for so big tarp. So. Uh, probably not worth the investment, but something to think about, definitely. I 
I was recently asked if I use any supports with the chimney in case it's windy and wind might pick up chimney and rock the stove and so forth and the stove came with these metal loops that can be attached to the spark arrester three of those and I have prepared cordage for the three of them as well but so far I haven't really been using the stove in any type of windy conditions it was perfectly still throughout the night as it is right now so I haven't experienced whether or not um, wind has an impact to the stove and so forth. This pipe is only, I think, two meters long. So I guess the problem becomes more substantial if you have a longer pipe. There's like a short or the normal pipe and then the longer one. And this is the normal one and it's perfectly fine for a small tent like this. But if I would have a bigger tent or a family or a group or so forth, I would then get, of course, the longer chimney as well. But so far, I haven't had problems. But if the day comes that I'm in windy conditions, I am prepared and I have the stuff ready to secure everything in place. But that hasn't been the case just yet, luckily enough. Without the inner tent, this thing actually packs down to quite a small package and I can did it sideways with this pack. No problem. What a great looking day to be outside. Really nice. Well, this easy and quick one night getaway, making good food, having a beer, turned out to be a tad more challenging than expected, but we got through it. Bit of equipment failure is just part of the deal. Things break when you use them enough. Eventually something will happen. Thanks for joining us for this quick overnight trip again. Keeping it simple, but that's a good way to balance out the previous trip. Good to have a bit longer ones and shorter ones. My name is Joel. This is Rokka leading the way. You have been watching Tavel Outdoors. I will see you all in the next one.